Greetings, everybody. Hope you guys are well. Um, yes, another live. Yes, another live. Hey, Oscar of After Comicade. Hope everybody's good. Hey, Akon. Welcome to another live uh, with me, Gillian. Southeast curator. Today we have a very special one coming up. I'm just waiting for a guest today, Gaviso, 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 I think. He must tell me how to say it right. Maybe I'll be saying his name wrong and then this whole entire time. And so now we'll join. Um, today we're having a live around storytelling in immersive media um as part of the Fog Gates festival we have Gaviso and um so now we're participating in um installation of social issue debut on the 14th uh which uses like their digital art and what we call immersive media basically to experience and everything so we'll get into that uh conversation about their work and their journey to here and stuff and their travels um I hope you're all registered for the festival. It's next week from the 14th. Register, register. It's going to be a really cool one, a really amazing one. Some interesting elements and some interesting ideas. Gays across Africa coming together to celebrate digital creativity. I'm trying to get advice on the live. There it is. <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. How do I say your name properly so I don't butcher <laughs> it? Well, it's a, it's a side trick. So you put your tongue to your two molders and pull out Tabiso. 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 Yeah, that's the one. Okay. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm good at saying the name, sometimes I'm not as good. Mm. Uh, in the moment, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it takes a, it takes a little bit of practice, you know, across the heart and yeah. tongue twist now. <laughs> I should I should know my kids are closer, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yo, how's, how's, it, how's it? How's it? How's it? How's it? Good, good. No, cool. Thank you for joining in. Thank you, you know, for sacrificing yeah. a few minutes of the evening to have a conversation with me about storytelling and immersive media. Yeah. I, I'm sure, uh, can you, you hear me properly? Yeah, I can hear you. So, no, can you hear me properly? Mm -hmm. Let me just do this. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Coolio, I'll just do a quick intro, um, and then you guys can introduce yourselves. Cool. Uh, welcome, everybody, on the live. My name is Dylan S. Fury. I'm the curator of Our Gates Festival, which takes place from next week, from the 14th to 24th. Uh, it's a digital arts festival brought to you by Timur Hong Precinct and Bits uh, School of Arts, or Bits Digital Arts, um, in partnership with AFD, Cartoon Film Commission, IFAS, uh, and the other sponsors. <laughs> I'm forgetting now. <laughs> um, GIZ, uh, FPB. Yeah, NAC. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's you cover most of them. Um, this live is around immersive media and storytelling, uh, which is one of the, the key um, focus areas for the festival, which is digital art, digital art, digital music, immersive media, gaming, animation, make culture, and yeah, I think that's it. Those are the six. Um, and this live is to speak to both Sonawa and Kabiso about their work. And their journeys to get here, uh, particularly, and it's always well, so interesting to find um, not so super techy creatives in using technology in their creativity, which is what the festival is about. So, how do you tell your stories uh, using technology as a catalyst, basically, um, in your work and stuff? So, uh, welcome, gentlemen. Uh, please do introduce yourselves properly, better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be here, so excited for the Park Guest Festival. 
Uh, I am a visual really, I'm, I'm a writer, uh, I'm a performer, um, yeah, I'm an author, and I'm, yeah, I've been interested in how to use poetry, how to use spoken word, how to use performance to interrogate our internal world in relation to our external world, how to, how to interrogate and bring to life um, our spirituality. Uh, and yeah, one of the things I'm really, really involved in and excited about is how to tell the new in songs or the new folk tale. Um, which, you know, are tales that, that capture history in magical ways. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Um, and my name is Tonabo Valashia. Um, a creative at heart, an illustrator with the background of graphic design. Um, and my work is just uh, inspired by African aesthetics and really looking into telling mm -hmm. our um, African narrative. And um, um, yeah, my focus is that. And I really want to, to focus on the beauty that is our continent and the beauty that is um, our people. So yeah, that's me. Amazing. I mean, a, a quick side story. I'm, I'm a big fan of Sonarbo. I think I even reached out to you once via the social media about your mural uh, in my one name which is like my all-time favorite mural in the world generally, uh, because I think it's, it's well-placed in, in the right place and well-executed. So I think I, I, I think I take it on Facebook or some, somewhere, uh, we had a brief interaction, yeah. I think last year or the year before, there by, what's this place again? Or uh, where is it again? What's this, that area? I'm forgetting Oh, Jewel City. Anyway. Yeah, Jewel City, yes. Yeah, there by yeah. Jewel City, yeah. I, I think I photographed it a bunch of times at night because I was staying in my morning. So I, I used to walk oh, yeah. there and I would photograph it and then the light becomes a real light. At the same. <laughs> so that was quite yeah. cool. Just a side note. Yeah, just a side note. Um, thank but thank you. you so much for joining us. Um, so, I mean, for those that don't know, let's, let's give a quick breakdown of what is your experience of immersive media uh, as creators? How did you get into it? And... Um, yeah, how did you get into, 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 into using immersive media in your practice for both of you? Okay, anyone else can start, yeah. Word. Um, so I think for myself, I first actually interacted with augmented reality in particular uh, through a program that uh, Tufugani, that TK ran for Giving Poetry Wins, which happened at the National Arts Festival. It was a hackathon where we worked with um, illustrators, digital illustrators, and poets worked together for, I think, in like two or three days to create two augmented reality pieces, you know? And I think that got exhibited at the 2019 Fabregasi Festival. And then it was interesting because around that time, I, was, I, was, I had this idea and this concept around, like, what would, what would we look like as ancestors? Right. If we are in the process right now, living and, and preparing to become ancestors, what would that look like? And so I had imagined that initially as like this online gallery of videos and, and images and poems, you know, music playing together. Um, and then when I got into the augmented hackathon uh, with TK, I think it completely kind of shifted. Uh, shifted and then yeah I applied through through Digital Lab Africa for this particular project which then you know allowed us the funding to then now you know run the interviews and create create the work and so I used a lot of what I learned during the hackathon and started really extending extending this project now into about like 10, 10 images for Tusonwa and then yeah through through that and through Fabu Gessi, I also I also then inter, interacted with the New Images Festival, um, who then uh, commissioned me because of the storytelling elements within the augmented reality work we were doing. Commissioned me then to uh, to get a team together to do projection mapping um, on the Saint Eustache Church, which is something I hadn't even heard of before. You know, when they initially got a hold of me, mm -hmm. um, so I had to do a lot of a lot of research. Um, find the right team and really then like stretch out this, this story 
about Africa, but also from the perspective of like Tulsa man and what the different faces of Africa look like, but also what that means being taken to Europe and being put, you know, on a church and how that speaks back to history. Um, and so, and so that has been kind of my main work trajectory, aside from interacting with other extended reality and most media forms. Uh, those have been the kind of the kind of work that I've been doing and that I'm interested in now. Okay, well, that's an amazing journey. And for you, Sonal? Yeah. Uh, well, for me, it was with uh, with this project. I was introduced to immersive, um, working in immersive. Um, media with uh, with this project that we're doing with uh, Claviso. Um So, uh, yeah, I think when he pitched it to me before, it wasn't, it wasn't for um, immersive media, but um, along the lines where we, we, we were um, funded the, 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 the DLA prize, um, we, we got to actually change the Change the whole um, approach of the project itself, and that's where I caught I caught onto this spark of um, immersive media, and um, it really was yeah. interesting for me also how uh, I can turn my artwork to 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 be alive, you know. So it's it was such such an interesting journey. Also, I learned a lot um, through this process. Also, so yeah, um, that's amazing. Okay. How was how, how was it showcasing then the work in Paris basically in terms of the project mapping? How was that experience? Yeah, that was that was wow. Maybe sort of you want to speak from an audience perspective than our chat from <laughs> from seeing Kamata. I didn't quite get that question. Um, okay. How was how was seeing how was seeing the projection mapping in Paris? How was the what? Seeing the, the projection, projection mapping. <laughs> the projection mapping. Oh yeah, that that was crazy. That was um, one of my highlights with uh, with um, with our uh, with our trip to 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 Paris. Um, I think um, to have a work that uh, of that magnitude in a in the center of 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 Paris um, and having people to hear our stories and um Tabiso is a legend here yeah, because he got Frenchmen to 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 uh, to pronounce coast coast so <laughs> <laughs> imagine that so yeah, yeah in the in the middle of Paris um um reciting that poem and seeing that uh that that projection mapping up in a very large scale um, um, uh, just normal people in the town, um, just viewing this, and whether you understand it or not, whether you like it or not, but it's there. And uh, for me, it really, it really enforced that that whole idea that um, it it really is our time, and it is a, our time to really tell our stories, and um, and the world is really listening. Yeah. Mm. And how is it yeah, you? I mean, yeah, because I think in creating that work, we were we were so considered, you know. And I have to, you know, shout out Jason Stapleton. I have to shout out Inka Kinzia. I have to shout out in this vessels as well, um, and also Faith Forty Seven for donating some artwork to the project as well, um, and. And in that consideration, we were very aware of space, you know, like of being in Europe, um, projecting like African work onto onto a church, um, which also like we're, we're very aware of how how churches have worked in uh, taking away that from like Africans, taking away those stories, right? Yeah. So I think it's it's had to be both. It had to be. When I say a, a political work, no, I, I think I'd say like a more cognizant work of how it exists in that space. But also, I think seeing it come alive, right, because of the images that we chose, because of the research that went behind behind that poem, and seeing and seeing that story there was just really, really affirming. 
Um, and I think for me, it just got to be excited to find spaces and buildings in South Africa to then be able to, to project and tell those stories. I always kind of talk about it as like this, uh, this digital fire, you know, that you yeah. sit around. And we used to sit around the fire to tell stories, and now, and now the fire has moved. Um, and the stories have changed and shifted. And so, you know, in that piece, we were, we were retrospecting on the past, looking in on the present, um, and then imagining the future, like, through this journey. And I really think it becomes, it becomes such a powerful space to reimagine our stories, but also to reimagine the buildings and the spaces around us. Yeah. yeah. That's super amazing. I mean, yeah, definitely. I think projection mapping, you know, when you travel around the world, you really get to see where you're from and what you have, and then how can you do this great work here and stuff. So in, in terms of your thinking now, uh, let's talk about, the, for example, the projection mapping itself. Um, where would you like ideally want to do that in the city? For example, in Johannesburg, where would the one place you want to be able to do that? <laughs> um, <laughs> table mounting. We <laughs> <laughs> want to do it on table mounting, but also, you know, there's the, the Joburg Tower, that circular yeah. one that goes yeah. up. You know, doing it on the outside, we're doing it on the inside. Um, I think also Sonaba and I have been talking about, so you know, you mentioned his mural, um, and I think about what would an augmented mural look like, what would a projection that mural look like. So I think yeah. that maybe becomes the next yeah. steps in the project of interviewing more people about their homes, about their communities, and getting murals of them painted in those communities that you can interact with and see and see their interviews and you can see them come to life and their history be illustrated and told through poetry, you know? Yeah. Okay. No, that's super amazing because I, I think, um, I mean, my experience coming to the festival, because normally I'm on the periphery of everything, basically. My, my job is, has always been to look at the creative industry as a whole. So being so immersed in, in, in the digital side of creativity has been super interesting. And I'm, I'm realizing, actually, you know, we've come a long way, but also we have a long way to go in terms of bringing that mm. ability into our reality, basically, into our, into, into our, like, the true lives that we live on a daily basis. And from, 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 from your standpoint, what are some of the challenges of, that you have, you have seen or you have faced in terms of getting into the digital arts, like participating in this entire process? What are some of the things that you, you feel like, like some of the challenges that people can anticipate, mm. basically? Mm. Um, in your process. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Can't think of anything on top of my mind right now, but I think the challenges was, uh, possibly to get into the market, right. Um, um, specifically in all these spaces that are around us. Um, it's, it's really tough to, 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 to do that. It's really tough to, if you really want to exhibit your work, um, really need to be either connected and know people um, who, who would help you around that. And I think access is a very important thing, um, especially as artists. Um, if you really want access into the market and access into all these different spaces that are also relevant to, to your art and what you are actually um, creating because you, you really have to have that, that audience itself that will follow your work. And, um, and to, to, to really get into that is, uh, is, is, is really tough. But yeah, I think those are one of the challenges um, I, would, I would think of also, you know. And uh, okay. yeah, I don't mm. know about you, Clarice. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think I'm a springboard of you um, around both access and accessibility, right? Yeah. Um, so obviously there's the one, there's the one level of, you know, do you have a computer to be able to, a computer fast enough to be able to download Unity so you can work with, uh, yeah. with these tools, right? Because otherwise then you only, you only have um, an app online that only allows you to host two free artworks before you have to pay really high rates, you know? Um, do you have access to, to a headset to be able to create a virtual reality space? 
if there is work then that you are producing in the virtual reality space, who can access a headset to be able to watch, to be able to watch your work? Um, I think that's also one of the reasons we went more with augmented reality than virtual reality, because at least everybody has a phone, you know, so everybody then can yeah. access that work and can access that layer. But I think like an entry, an entry level headset is going to sit at like 3,000 bands. It's a whole nother budget um, that you have to have. Uh, even within, within projection mapping itself, not only is the work itself extremely expensive to produce. I mean, the, the project we did cost course was about like seven minutes and it, it costs a lot, right? Just to produce it. But then it also becomes an extra cost of the equipment and setting the equipment up and getting it to the space. And then also it's about like access to the space as well if you want to if you want to project. Like which permissions do you get? Who do you need to talk to? Um, especially I mean like in Paris, there's like whole things around like how loud something can be. And then also it was was COVID, the lockdowns so of what time it starts, what time it ends. Um, which was tricky, and you know, and I think I think as artists we're we're accustomed to working with a little, you know, yeah. and bending and stretching a budget. Um, but I really do think, like, you know, any kind any kind of support is necessary. Like, and and also as an artist, like just learning, like, sending proposals, mm -hmm. like, find these days. Like my art practice is like seventy percent sending out proposals, you know, um, and that's you know that's the work that we've got to do if we want to see our work to move and if we want to see it travel. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and the, and the admin is the life. I mean, curating this festival is the admin, um, and and then the work itself is only about thirty percent, you know, or even twenty percent most of the time, I, and I think we take that for granted. Um, but but I like that you mentioned the access. So I think one thing that uh, when I was speaking to Nyambura, um, who's going to be hosting and curating one of the the, 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 the exhibitions and talks around immersive media, we were talking about that beyond the headset. So like, how do you cut, how do you, how do you reach people where they are? So how do you get people to be using the, the device that they have in their phones and all that kind of stuff in terms of their work and in terms of the, the accessibility in terms of a consumer perspective? Because I think which is super critical because like you mentioned, the headset can get quite expensive uh, for the consumer. But we also want them to consume our work. So how do we balance that off is an interesting, um, I think, challenge. I um, mean, speaking of exciting stuff, what can people expect from your like your project uh, that you are going to be launching and stuff? What, what can what should they be expecting? Uh, I, I don't give away too much, but then what, what can we give them as a glimpse in terms of into that space and stuff? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm so I'm so excited for this project. It's been like. How many years in the making now? So now, like two, three years. Two, um, three, I yeah, think. Yeah, three years. Yeah, yeah. And so we've had really an opportunity to interview some really exciting, exciting young South Africans in regards to their spirituality and their practice. Um, and through those interviews, I think really exciting realizations uh, came through just around around what it means to be practicing, to become an ancestor, you know? And so I think we really invite people into, into not necessarily, yeah, yeah, into a magical world, but also a spiritual world, but also one that, that meets and melts and communicates with our present and with our physical world. Okay. That's, that's super, super... Uh layered <laughs> not giving away the, not giving away the the, the the final result and the experience but i, I like that yeah I, i'm excited yeah. because I, I think um this would be probably one of my first experiences in a very long time in terms of augmented reality you know we experience it here and there but this will be interesting to see how that comes about uh, i mean a quick question how do you guys sustain a, how do you guys sustain a collaboration like this between the two of you as, as, as super creative people how are you finding balance and how are you finding, um, how do you work together? Like, how, how's that working out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we stayed, we stayed in Paris for, for, for a month together. So yeah, uh, we, we know each other <laughs> that well. So yeah, I think, um, 
it, it, it has been a, quite a journey with me and Claviso. Um We've been collaborating, um, I think, throughout these years now. Um, uh, we collaborated in, in, in his book, um, Laughing in My Father's Voice, uh, which is a collection of, of, of poems that, that he did. And, and yeah, um, from there, also collaborated in one of my um, exhibitions um, where well, he was also contributed. Can you hear me? Maybe you're breaking up a little. Yeah. Oh, shucks. Can you hear me now? No, try, and go ahead. try and go ahead. Yeah. Okay, now we're losing you more. <laughs> Yo. Is that cool? Are you back? Yeah. Yes, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, you can. There you are. Yeah, I'll just sum it up then. Yeah, so I've, I think uh, the journey has been um, quite long with us in terms of collaborating and uh, creating um, uh, awesome projects together. So I think we've maintained that um, throughout the years and um, it, it, it really balances really well because um, I'm a visual communicator and he and he is a, a communicator performer, you know, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think we balance it quite well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I've been lucky. I've been lucky to work with Uso Nabo. I think the first time um, was at his his in Belek or his, uh, his solo yeah. exhibition uh, where I got to perform some poems around closeness and blackness there. Um, and then from there as well, just so in love with his work again was saying. Um, getting him involved with my poetry collection. There was the exhibition mm -hmm. with the Z Zulu as well, Taxi Times Art. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think we kind of see the world similarly um, around like how magic just is infused like within it. Um, a lot of Sonapu's work will be you know portraits of people that already like exist, but then he just. He just, you know, morphs them and turns them into like these magical, like ancestral beings. And I think that's also something like I'm really interested in is how to pull the magic from the mundane, how to see the beauty, the ugly, or the ugly in the beauty, you know? And so I think the work really, really melds together. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. You guys seem to have that glue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I think my, my, my last yeah. question is, like, what is your hope for the digital creative space in Africa? That will be my last question. Mm. Oh, what a good question. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question? Um, network is uh, Is network acting up? I think he's, he's asking, what is your hope for the... Uh, can, can you hear us? Oh, I think he's frozen. How's it, guys? Can you hear us now? Uh, yeah. There you are. Yeah, sorry. It's my connection. Yeah. Sorry, man. Now, I was asking, um, what is your hope for the digital creative space in Africa? Oh, uh, I think it's collaboration for me. I'll, I'll just sort it out. It will, it will be like collaboration um, for for all artists and just working together and, and, and really telling our stories. And I believe if we really do that, um, we, can, we can really run the whole, um, the, the whole continent and really tell our stories the way we will really want to tell our stories and, um, and own our, our, our stuff, you know? So um, I really want that for us and uh, for future generations also. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, definitely collaborate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, collaboration is so important. I think it's the way to get so many, so many things done. Um, and I like that Suna also mentions like for the future, for the future generation, right? So yeah. what kind of legacies are we leaving behind? Um, and I think I've been, I've been using, I've been using this quote by Steve Biko, um, where he states, and I write what I like that you know. 
um, the world already already has financial and mechanical systems, you know, it already has its how and its what, and it's on Africa to give the world a more human face, right? And I really, I really think that's that's the power and the capacity of African storytelling and, and you know interacting with the digital space um, is to give it is to give it a soul, is to give it a history. Um, and so I'm really excited to see uh, through this digital creative space people interacting with with the technology in a way that really that really reexamines and reimagines what the world around us can look like, what it will look like, uh, reimagine how to shift and change it. And I think you know like this technology really gives us the power to do that to create a new world and then live up to it. Yeah. No, that's amazing. I, I think it's, it's a very super exciting time and, and I like that, you know, the, the world, even in this technology space, we still require the human, the humanness. And I think Africa can really offer that, um, that perspective and stuff. And it, through our storytelling, through our, you know, the energy we put out to the world and the work we contribute basically. So yeah, no, thank you for that. Thank you so much. But I think we'll keep it short for because we'll leave that rest for the festival. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming up. We're so excited. Next week, we're on 14th. Yeah. yeah, from the 14th to 24th. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and I think um, for those that haven't registered, please register so you can see what's happening and when. Um, there, there's a couple of mm -hmm. opportunities for you to experience the work. Uh, it's going to be amazing at Simona Hong Precinct. Um, and then, yeah, we'll make an announcement next week, until the next, until next week in terms of logics, logistics and what's going to be happening uh, and where and who's doing what and stuff. So looking forward to it. But thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for coming through. Good. Thanks for your time, bro. I know we are busy guys. Thank so you so much. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Oh, cheers. Bye. Bye. Cool. Thank you so much uh, to everybody that's tuned in. Thank you to Kaviso, Kaviso, Kaviso and Sonawa for coming on board and having this quick conversation around their storytelling journey in the immersive media space and digital creativity. Uh, this is part of the lead up to the festival, uh, Falkese Festival. I'm the curator of this year for the festival. Um, the theme is good because you have to, because the work that we do is super, super important and, and, important and imperative society, like Sona we mentioned, uh, around owning our stories, uh, and for the future generations also to be able to participate in this creative space. Uh, this is brought to you by Tzimola Hong, the School of Arts, AFD, IFAS, GIZ, um, Arts Research Africa, GFC, National Arts Council, and um, all our other partners. So thank you so much. Looking forward to having you all at the festival. The festival is 1424. October, it's digital, so mostly online, and a few instances of physical here and there for those that can be in Johannesburg. Uh, please go register. The link is in our bio for the registration details. It's a free event for all 10 days uh, for everything from digital music, digital art, immersive media, animation, gaming, media culture. It's a good place to learn and see what's happening on the continent. Uh, we have a couple of exhibitions. Are and a couple of opportunities and projects in there that are being launched and stuff across Africa that really focus on these disciplines uh, and also putting a way forward for the digital creative space, you know, for everybody to participate and making it more accessible to everybody else. So thank you so much. Register and we'll see you on the 14th uh, of October. Next week on Monday, we have another live, which is again around immersive media, but with Nyambura, who's based in Kenya. Uh, who's an amazing like a creative and curator um in this landscape so thank you so much uh and take care